It's great to be with you today. It's a real privilege to be here. I'm excited about what God's doing here at Cornerstone Television. You know, I've had a fantastic summer. I had several weeks off to be with my family, and then I just got back from Kenya. And the whole time that I've kind of been away from the pulpit, God's been, I wanted him to show me many things. He's really been just showing me one thing, and that is his heart. I think the most amazing thing there is, I was going to say in all of creation, but it transcends creation. The most amazing thing there is, is the heart of God. And I'm so excited to share with you God's heart for you. You know, the Bible starts out with two chapters where everything's good. You can read Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 over and over, and you won't find anything bad. Everything God made, at the end of every day, he said it was good except day 6 when he made man, and then he said it was very good. The only little problem shows up in chapter 2 when it says that the, the, the first thing that was not good, didn't say it was bad, just not good, was man's aloneness, and so he made woman. And now we have man and woman together, and God made Adam for Eve and Eve for Adam. Do you know what? They never, ever argued. They got along perfectly. Can you imagine that? But then chapter 3 comes. And chapter 3 is a very sad Bible. You remember the story. You remember how Adam and Eve are in the garden, and God made one rule. You know, <laughs> Moses got ten commandments. Adam and Eve only had one rule. Just don't eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the center of the garden. Eat whatever you want. Do whatever you want. Have a good time, kids, but don't eat from that tree. And, of course, you remember how the snake comes, the talking snake that Satan's in, and how he says to Eve, first of all, the sa Satan, he attacks the character of God. He says to Eve, he, first he calls God a liar. He says, God did not say that. And then he says, and you know, God's motives aren't right. God doesn't want the best for you. He's keeping you from eating that because he's trying to withhold his blessing from you. And pretty soon Eve looks down at this fruit. She said it's pleasant to the eye. It looked like it would taste good and it was going to make her a better person. And she chooses to lay down God's way and to eat the fruit. And you know, the whole world got screwed up. As soon as she ate it, she gave it to Adam and he ate it. And sin entered the world. And you know, we can't even begin to describe the consequences of that sin. Guys, I want you to learn something. Sin always comes with incredible consequences. God starts to lay it out. He says there's going to be pain. He said there's going to be weeds in your garden. Work's going to become hard. Now, work isn't a part of the curse. They had worked before uh, the fall, but work was pleasant. It was fulfilling. It was significant. Now, let's just struggle all day to get enough to get by. Huge consequences from sin. Paradise was lost. But you know, the best news in chapter 3 is that God comes. I want you to read this scripture with me. It says here, this is the good news about the heart of God. When, when uh, Adam and Eve heard that God come down, and they listened to this verse. It says, and then, at the, then the man and the woman heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Now, the implication of this verse to me is that this wasn't the first day God came down to walk. In fact, I don't know how long it was from creation when God made Adam and Eve until the fall, but I happen to believe that it was a considerable period of time. Not a few days, not even a few weeks, but months or years where every evening God would come down in bodily form and he would walk in the garden with Adam and Eve. You see, guys, God made us for fellowship with him. That's the very purpose of the creation. The thing that makes you special is that God gave you a spirit because God is spirit. God made you to know him and to be known of him. And so every night as the sun's setting and the cool breeze is blowing in this paradise, God would come down and walk with Adam and Eve. And it was the best time of the day. I can picture Adam looking at his, you know, at his Timex saying, you know, just a couple more hours and God's going to come. And they would walk with him and share their life with God. And it was an incredible thing. But now, after many, many times of walking with God, when God would come, they would run toward him and they would hug him. He would hug them and they would share life together. And now, though, once sin entered the world, when they see God coming, they run and they hide. And, you know, they had made a covering after they had sinned. It says, the Bible says they became aware of their nakedness. I don't think this has so much to do with covering up body parts. But suddenly, when they look at themselves, they're ashamed of what's happened. But here's the good news. Listen to this. When they hid, the Lord God called out to the man. And this means mankind, not just Adam, but Adam and Eve together. He says, Adam, where are you? Eve, 
Where are you? Now, God isn't playing hide and seek. He's not calling them because he doesn't know where they are. He knows all things. God's calling because his heart's broken, that sin has come and separated them from him. Guys, I want you to look in this passage and see the heart of God. Because there are many of you out there, many of you, you know, I hear a lot of excuses from people for why they don't come to church. They're too busy, you know, the music's too loud, the this and that, the parking lot doesn't pay. I hear all these excuses. The one that breaks my heart is when people say to me, oh, I can't come to church, it's too late for me. Guys, it isn't too late for you. You may have screwed up your life, but you haven't screwed up your life like Adam and Eve screwed up the whole world. And yet the heart of God was, after they had screwed it up, God comes and he calls them to come home. He made a way by covering them with skins to say there's going to be a provision to pay for your sin. But the heart of God is to always come home. And I just want to say to you today, if you're out there and you think it's too late, that you've sinned too much, you've screwed up too much, I just want you to hear God say to you, it's not too late. If you'll come, if you'll stop hiding, if you'll stop making excuses, if you'll stop rationalizing, if you'll just look past all of the circumstances, look at the heart of God. Because the heart of God, no matter how bad our sin, is always to reach out to us and say, come home. And I believe right now, right now there are some of you who need to hear that the God who made the whole universe and everything that in it, the God who is all-powerful and all-knowing, those are all wonderful things. But the greatest part of God is his heart. And God has a heart that's always coming and always coming, always calling and always saying, come home.